Hello and welcome to the DSO Imager channel. This is James and uh, tonight I'm just going to take you quickly through the workflow of my latest image, the uh, Pac-Man Nebula. Uh, this was taken with my uh, Celestron Edge HD8 and the ZWO ASI 294 Abano and I was using astronomic filters for this one, 6 nanometer HA03 and S2. So let's take a quick look at the uh, stacked channels here. So here's my HA. Oh, and uh, real quick, there we go. I, I don't always give this information out in my videos just because I forget, uh, but this is what the uh, total sub count looked like. So 83, uh, 600 or 10 minute subs for HA, 64 of 03 and 77 of S2. Uh, the reason why this isn't so balanced is a lot of this data was shot with the um, with a bright moon out, and I kept O3 mostly to before before the moon rised or just after it rised, and that's why we just have a little bit less up there. And the total was about a little over 37 hours. I think it was like 37 and a half. All right. So anyway, here's our HA. HA as usual is really clean. Next up is the O3. And not surprisingly, O3 is a bit noisier. And S2. I mean, S2 looks pretty good. There's a decent amount of S2 in this target here. Okay, and so I ran dynamic background extraction on each. Uh, frame individually. Now the one difference is that HA is so clean that I did not use any noise reduction at all on that H3. But because of the graininess of O3 and also because most of your details coming from the HA anyway, I went ahead and applied some noise reduction to these. So I mean that looks really good. If we compare it to yeah I mean that noise reduction did really good didn't even hurt the uh, detail too much and for noise reduction all I did I just used the uh, the uh, easy processing suite denoise and it basically runs a script with TGV settings and MMT settings. And it does recommend to do this while it's everything is still linear. I have run it on, um, uh, on non-linear images, but uh, it does work best before that stretch. And there's the S2. So yeah, that denoise script, it cleaned up these two channels pretty well. So uh, after after I uh, ran dynamic background extraction on these, I put them in the LRGB combination tool and then applied an auto stretch. And this is what we end up with. So from this point, I went ahead and extracted a luminance to run deconvolution and we'll take a quick look at what deconvolution did to us so this is before and that's after so kind of focus on this edge of the column right here see how that did a nice job on that and of course the stars pop
And so adding the uh, deconvolution oops, gives us this. And then after that, I went ahead and, no, actually, this is not with deconvolution. I blurred it and then applied deconvolution. So this is with the luminance and, and the deconvolution applied to the color image. So before, after. So next step was to run StarNet to remove the stars. And we end up with this here. And now I'm just going to step through all the different phases here. So as usual, the first thing I do is uh, remove any magenta that's in there. So you can see some faint green around there. That's with uh, a CNR tool. Okay, so we took care of most of the magenta. There's a little bit left over. Some of these really strong stars are still showing up. And then it's a matter of working with curves. And what I'm doing with curves is basically increasing contrast by taking these areas that are dark and then these areas that are slightly lit up and trying to create some separation. Also, you can see saturation now. So at this point, I'm playing with saturation. There's not a lot of uh, green in here showing. I mean, it's there. And we're using saturation to pull that out. Also, it helps with these blues and these these areas here that are kind of gray. Boosting the saturation gives them some color too. Now we're inverting again. Now, if you guys have been watching me, you know what's coming up next. Basically, I'm trying to take this yellow and gold color and subtract or rather trade some of the yellow for some red. And so we do that by inverting and then using the SCNR tool to remove some blue. So you can see these edges here. It just kind of dials back the intensity of the blue on this inverted image. Changes it to this kind of turquoise color. And then when you flip it back, now you've got more of a reddish color in there. See? Yellow. Oh, we got some red in there. I like this. I like this red. I don't know. The yellow looks a little bit like mustard to me. And, I mean, it's okay, but sometimes that yellow can be really overpowering. So it's just my way of toning it down and adding some color. Alright, so, actually, I have to confess. I was uh, one day working on an image, and I was showing it to my wife, and she made the mustard comment, and so it's kind of stuck into my head ever since. Okay, anyway, so I made a copy of that so I can work on it a little bit more, and, and this, this kind of acts as a, a reference point for me, so I can go back to this if I want to back up some. And it's just more playing with curves. Here we got a range mass, that way I can give a little bit of attention to these areas separately. I think what I'm trying to do is darken this, because the center is really bright, without dark making the, the edges here too dark. It's, it's, I want to have, the mask allows me to have control over how much contrast to apply to each area. So yeah, see, we're darkening that. Now I'm inverting the, the very same mask. And I made a little something there. Hard to tell. <laughs> and I think this is probably where I ended up at. So next, uh, we need to work on the stars. Here's what the stars look like after I did some work on them. Go ahead and step back. This is what they look like when I originally pulled them out. So we have lots of magenta in there. So invert, subtract green, and then play with curves a little bit. Oops, too far. That's what it looked like uh, combining. Now actually, when you do pixel math, you have an option to create a new image. It defaults to replace target image, and that's what happened here. 
I actually prefer to create a new image. And so I actually went back and yeah, here's where it is. And that's the formula, pretty simple. Basically, it's just the starless image plus the star mask and create new image, color space RGB, nothing fancy. And I actually tweaked with this more. I started to uh, share this image out, and uh, but I made m one more tweak. So you see the stars. I mean, there's no magenta in these stars, but there was still some magenta in the image. And so when I added them, the star in particular, I actually kind of like that, but I want to see if I could uh, address that. So I was able to clean this one up. I'm not really sure which one I like more. What do you guys think? Leave the, leave the purple star in there or this one? Anyway, let's take a close look and then wrap this video up. So I really like the way the, uh, the dark dust came out over here. This is an area that's usually very dark in most pictures and the first time I took uh, Pac-Man took shots of the Pac-Man Nebula a couple years ago. I mean, this area actually like looked like a hole in the nebula rather than dark dust that's blocking the light from stuff behind it. Got all these bot globules in there. What's going on with that guy? So anyway, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Which uh, flavor do you like more, the purple star or without that purple star? And uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like and subscribe. If you want to know more detail about how I did this, I actually have a two-part series of processing in and sight on the elephant trunk where um, I go through much more detailed steps. It's almost like a tutorial. So please check that out if you've got questions about how I did all this. Uh, I just wanted to keep this video short and give a quick overview of the uh, workflow. So anyway, I've got nothing else. Clear skies.